Good evening, everyone. Good evening, and welcome you to our Bible study here at Sierra Nord Calvary Baptist Church uh, on this rainy, cool Wednesday, um, October 19th evening. Uh, we are here to uh, dive into uh, God's Word in our bi weekly Bible study. Um, we're going to ask um, Brother Earl to go ahead and open us in a word of prayer, please. Let's pray. Almighty God, we want to just thank you again once more that we can gather in this fashion, Lord, to <clears throat> go into your word. We want to pray for everyone that will participate this evening, and even those who will <clears throat> listen to this broadcast uh, sometime in the future. Lord, we pray that you just continue to bless our speaker and, um, <clears throat> and just bless um, our chairman here. <clears throat> Lord, we pray that you just continue to empower him and use him mightily to do your bidding. Lord, we ask that as we go through the study tonight, that you just open our hearts, open our minds, and help us to be receptive to what you want to impart to us this afternoon, Lord. We, we pray that you just continue to bless us, and bless our church, and just continue to strengthen us, Lord, in areas where we're weak and we're <clears throat> failing. Our Father, we want to give you thanks and just to acknowledge you that you're great, you're a mighty God, that there's nothing impossible with you. And we want to lift up the sick and shut in also tonight, Lord, those who are hurting and those who are sick. Lord, we pray that your healing hands will just touch them, Lord, and reveal them. <clears throat> Move from them the, um, the pain and the, the agony some are having tonight, Lord. We pray that you just touch them with your mighty hands and heal them and bring comfort to them. Bless us now as we continue in the study of Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Earl. Um, all right. So, you know, everybody here is, uh, knows the rules. If you have a question, just wave your hand or use a little icon. Or put it in the chat and we will acknowledge you and uh you can go through with your question comment or uh statement uh reverend chisholm as he always says doesn't mind being interrupted so just uh go ahead and we will acknowledge you and you can interrupt away um only announcements i have are just a reminder sunday god willing we're gonna have our celebration of um our pastor emeritus reverend dr richard legister so uh come on out and bring a friend I said, you know, if you have uh, cards or nice words you want to uh, say to him, then you can uh, bring those out um, as well. And also our uh, presenter tonight, Reverend Chisholm, will be our preacher for uh, Sunday. So uh, we look forward to hearing uh, from him as well. And uh, he'll probably plug it a little later on as too. You can uh, pre-order his uh, book. Uh, I just looked at it, the title escapes me. So I'll leave that to you, Reverend Chisholm. Right, right. That's, right. Uh, that's uh, coming up uh, soon as well. Um, and I think that is it. And for those who saw uh, Mrs. Legister on Sunday, she had a little wrap on her hand. She had a little thing done to her hand, and she's doing uh, very well. All right. So uh, with that, Reverend Chisholm, I'll go ahead and uh, turn it over to you, sir. Thank you, my brother. The book list, I forget to mention it is, it's available on a pre-order on Amazon, Rastafari Believes a Critical Analysis, the only book in print that dares to challenge the fundamental beliefs of Rastafari. All of the fundamental beliefs are mistaken, incorrect, or based on just plain ignorance. And I challenge anybody to not just rebut but refute the claims that I make in my book. All right, tonight is going to be a short Bible study. I'm going to just amplify something I shared in the church's bulletin at Dundee United about two weeks ago. And sorry, this is for Sunday. I'm sorry. Give me one sec, please. I pull the wrong thing. This is for Sunday. Let me pull the study for tonight. Uh, right, this one. Somebody find Luke. Luke 10, doesn't matter what version you have, I would ask somebody to just click.
clearly read Luke 10, 30 to 37 for me, please. And then I'll, I'll read you through the little script I have. It's just two pages, so we should be... on earth. Are we still on? I'm not hearing anybody. Yes, I think we're still on. Can you hear me? I'm hearing you now, right. Okay. Yeah, I think I was having a little glitching over here. Mm -hmm. So I had to turn off my video. Okay. All right. I think we're ready to go, Rev. Yeah, Luke 10, 30 to 37. Did somebody read for me? Okay, I have it right here. Ten thirty to thirty seven. Okay. Now this is the uh, King James. Good enough. Ten thirty. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him, and departed leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan and his journeyed, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? 37. And he said, he that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus, then said Jesus unto him, go and do likewise. Do thou likewise. All right. Thank you, sir. Well, so we're looking at the rethinking the Samaritan parable. Notice I did not call it the good Samaritan parable. Mm -hmm. So I've told you my Greek students, even though the Greek text has an English thing at the top, good Samaritan, I think it's improper to call it the good Samaritan parable. I'll tell you why. We think, I think we are imbibing Jewish prejudice against Samaritans. So we call this exceptional one good, though the rest are not good. Just like you would meet, I have been to places where people know that I'm a Jamaican and they will say something like in England, when I preach in the, in the white churches there, you speak good English for Jamaicans, a back did compliment. Yes. It's not a genuine compliment at all. So Jamaicans don't speak good English. I said mm. in my mind, you should hear the, the graduates of Oxford, who, you know, who are Jamaicans. All right, but so the Samaritan, the man is called a certain Samaritan. He's doing good work, but he's not characterized as the good Samaritan. So the late, I'm reading you through this now, you'll have the script as well. It's not long, just about two pages actually. The late Bible scholar Bruce Metzger, textual critic, in one of his early books, examined this popular parable by looking at the implied life motto of the main actors, the robbers, each of the religious men, and the Samaritan, considering what they did with reference to the victim in the parable. So a few background points with the parable should be helpful. One, the Jericho road was proverbially plagued with armed bandits. It was regarded as a very dangerous road. So if you're a normal person who knows the nature of the road, you go with your own private dagger or sicarius to protect yourself. You don't go there unarmed unless you risk your life. Very dangerous road. Yet this man 
who was traveling told the innkeeper, look, I will, next when I come back again. So he's a frequent one at that particular inn, albeit part of the Jericho Road experience. Number two, the implied journey of the religious men was the same as that of the man depicted in verse 30. He was going from Jerusalem to Jericho. That is away from the religious center in Jerusalem. The priest and Levite could therefore touch the wounded or dead man and not be regarded as ceremonially unclean. Since they were not heading to fulfill religious duties, they were heading away from it. If you are going to perform religious duties, you can't touch a dead body. And uh, very few exceptions. For a very close family member, you can, but not normally. But they were not going to do anything religious. They were coming away from the religious center in Jerusalem. So they could touch the wounded man if they were concerned, if they had a heart, to see whether the man was just wounded badly or dead. Three, the dislike of Jews for Samaritans. They have no dealings with the Jews with Samaritans. You know that proverbial expression goes back to BC times. Before his death, and this is just a condensed view of the source of the fuss, Jacob gave Joseph a blessing in which he called him a fruitful bow by a well. Genesis 49, 22. The blessing was fulfilled as the territory allotted to the tribes of Joseph's two sons, Ephraim, doubly fruitful in the meaning of his name, and Manasseh, was the fertile land that eventually became Samaria. Later, Israel divided into two kingdoms. The northern kingdom, called Israel, established its capital first at Shechem, a revered site in Jewish history, and later at the hilltop city of Samaria. In 722 BC, now the modern scholars who don't have a regard for Jesus, mixed with calendar dating, would call it um, BCE, before the common era, rather than before Christ. Same something. Assyria conquered Israel and took most of its people into captivity. The invaders then brought in Gentile colonists, quote from Babylon, Kutha, Ava, Hamas, and from Sepharvaim, 2 Kings 17, 24. They brought them in to reset the land. The foreigners brought with them their pagan idols, which the remaining Jews began to worship alongside the God of Israel. Intermarriages also took place, and you know the words that that would cause. Meanwhile, the southern kingdom of Judah fell to Babylon in 600 BC. Its people too were carried off into captivity, but 70 years later, a remnant of 43,000 was permitted to return and rebuild Jerusalem. The people who now inhabited the former northern kingdom, the Samaritans, vigorously opposed the repatriation and tried to undermine the attempt to re-establish the nation. For their part, the full-blooded monotheistic Jews detested the mixed marriages and worship of their northern cousins. So walls of bitterness were erected on both sides and did nothing but harden for the next 550 years. It's a quotation I pulled from the internet. I think there was an, an episode to where somebody, a Samaritan apparently, desecrated the altar by um, killing an unclean animal as a sacrifice to God. So that was the, the kind of a wellspring of the thoughts between Samaritans and Jews. They are of mixed blood. They are not pure Jews, even though they are related to us. We have nothing to do with them. The motto of the robbers, so Metzger looks at the mottos of each group, the main actors. The victim was not, he didn't have any motto because they almost left him without his life. The motto of the robbers, Metzger says, was, what's yours is ours. We'll take it by force. Well, the robber's motto has not changed over 2,000 odd years. That of each of the religious men was, what's mine is mine, I'll keep it. If you know that this road is dangerous and you don't have any sicarius to protect yourself, then you are a silly man. We are not going to risk our life to pause here any length of time to look if you're just badly wounded or dead. If you're dead, why should I risk my life for you? What's mine is mine, I'll keep it. Based on the nature of the motto so far, what would you guess is the suggested or recommended motto of the Samaritan? Anybody, take a guess. Look at the nature of the two so far and see if you could spin one that is somewhat of the same kind 
different in a sense, but with the wording would be fairly similar. What's yours is ours. We'll take it by force. What's mine is mine. I'll keep it. Anybody want to take a guess at the Samaritan's motto? What's mine is yours. Take it. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Anybody else? Damien is on the right track. Any other idea if you want to modify his? All right, well, let's take out of the suspense. What's mine is ours, I'll share with you. Yeah. Now, in all likelihood, the person who was brutalized on the ground might have been a Jew. We're not dead sure. The text doesn't give us enough evidence to say that, you know, definitively. But in all likelihood, the person was a Jew and might have been marked by the nature of his clothing and so on. So up comes this certain and put the man on his own beast and took him to the motel or the hotel or the inn so that he could be cared for. And he said, look, take care of him. And if with the two pence that would, would Damien that <laughs> the hotel in, in your area that I'll be staying would mm -hmm. charge us two pence. Yeah, no, right, two pence, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, superb. <laughs> but in that time, the money was probably not exactly cheap. the point is he's using his own resources and promises the the, the, the innkeeper if if you have used more than the two pence when i'm back this side because he had credit there no doubt i will take care of the expense and so it's a very tremendous story um it has become universal as the good samaritan in fact classical paintings by rembrandt the good samaritan and I discovered years ago that there's a good Samaritan law in America. That if you see somebody suffering on the side of a road or anywhere in public, and you can provide some help, even just to call, is it 119 here or 911? 911. 911, if you don't call it, then they can charge you. And the bottom line of the charge is callousness yeah. or lack of charitableness for a fellow human being. The good Samaritan law. So... What we are seeing here is, a month, and Jesus says, no, okay, you want to quibble with me, Mr. Lawyer? Who is your neighbor? Who do you think is neighbor in the story? Who is lifted up by the Lord, giving up the kingdom of heaven is like unto? So is the kingdom of heaven is like unto this person who did this deed of goodness for a man who completely opposite him in terms of ethnicity and regard but he sacrificed for that person. So a genuine neighbor seeks to share with the needy. Am I really a neighbor? It's something for us to ask ourselves. If we were in that same situation, and we may have been in situations like that, where we're either too busy rushing to church on a Sunday morning to help a, a, a lady or a man who was a flat and apparently does not have the right equipment to take off the tire, and replace it. You don't have a jack or some such tool that you need. But I'm too busy, let's say I'm going to preach and I'm running late already or whatever. To Metzger's motto for each main actor, I add the implied emotion. The robber's antipathy, feeling against. This man did you nothing. Why do you have him up? What do you have against the man? Why you want to do him in so badly? And might I just mention, um, mischievously, humorously. We have to watch that expression. They, they beat him within an inch of his life. Not two inches, not a foot of his life. Mm -hmm. What is two inches of his, an inch of his life anyway? How less dead is he if you beat him within an inch of his life? But the man was badly beaten. Antipathy was the emotion I see, addition to the motto, what's yours is ours, we'll take it by force. The religious people, apathy, the apathy, the alpha there is called an alpha privative. It negates pathos without feeling, lacking in feeling for 
somebody who is really in dire need. The religious men, okay, I did not do him in, I did not knock him down, I did not wound him, but you're still guilty of uh, lacking feeling for somebody who's in great need. And the Samaritan is empathy. Psychologists tell me it's feeling with, feeling as walking in somebody's sandals or moccasin or shoes. You're feeling the pain that the person has gone through. And as we would say in Jamaica, you feel it in your gut. The parable challenges the nature of our Christian claims. How so do you think? Now we're going to have a little dialogue. How does this challenge our Christian claims in today's world? Anybody can talk to me. So that's it from me in terms of sharing. We'll just take some dialogue now as much as you can. I'm not going to stretch it out like chewing gum. <laughs> but how does it challenge our Christian claims practically? Here is a man, badly beaten, not by you, but you come across a person and you are aware of the person's um, need physically for help. How do we respond when those things appear to us? When we encounter those needs in our lives, our busy lives, our religious uh, missionary journeys, our religious engagements, how do we respond? How does the parable challenge us as kingdom dwellers? Yeah, uh, to me, it shows what we should do versus what um, what we would do. Right, right. You know, because I mean, you know, should is the ideal, would is the normal. Right. You know, we um, we tend to think of ourselves first. Mm -hmm. You know, and what kind of disease does he have? Well, you know, is he bleeding? You know, I guess they didn't think of much like us back then. You know, we mm -hmm. think about what kind of disease they have and do I have a cut? Will I catch it or whatever? Right. Before health. Is it something and... contagious? Right. And then as Am you I going said... to risk my health or my life to help this person who's bleeding and bleeding badly? And then, like you said, you know, man, I'm late for work already. You know, mm -hmm. I can I stop to help them? You know, but um, you know, do unto others, right? <laughs> Precisely, the golden rule to others so i always say i always say you know if, if if my wife or my girls were in any trouble i would want somebody to help them oh yeah you know uh, as much as possible you know that's that's me it's, anybody it's, else how does the parable of the samaritan challenge our christian claims no claim and conduct are sometimes two different things just like belief and behavior are not necessarily intertwined or married in our lives we believe a lot but we don't behave a lot in terms of the beliefs that we have well for me personally one it, it's challenging what are we turning a blinding eye to as as the church uh, what do we just keep confined to the walls i was able to march with a three churches last saturday into abortion clinic we we're praying outside of it and um somebody was able to come forth but also what are we prejudiced to? Who are we calling? What sect of people are we calling not good mm -hmm. or not safe or not worthy? So, the, we the, 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 yeah, so, you know, it, it has, um, it's a lot there. I, I think that if we look at it, um, it should be able to challenge us in many different ways mm -hmm. as far as what is Jesus really saying when he's teaching this parable? That's right. There's a, re there, there's a requirement that God is saying, and he's using the unfavorable. He's using what the Jews despise. They call them dogs. Um, so I think it should challenge us. Well, for me personally, it's challenging me um, in those levels. What am I turning a blinding eye to? And what am I prejudiced against? And I'll be a little bit specific and then I'll digress. Um, there's times where the Holy Ghost has to challenge my heart because I look at the Muslims and those who are with the Quran as if they're stuck in their way. Mm -hmm. as if the Holy Ghost has no power to deliver them. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's, that's a few takeaways for me. Right. And uh, even though we might claim, you know, I don't have the knowledge base to talk to Muslims or to Rastas, another excluded group, we think they are beyond the pale, they can't be saved. Who are we to declare that anybody can't be saved? We're not God. 
Are we lacking in trust and confidence in the Holy Spirit's convicting power? And two, you know, the tradition that the Jews had in terms of neighbor is a fellow Jew. A, a fellow Jew that I maybe know, or once I get an identification marker that this is a fellow Jew, that person is my neighbor. Everybody else, you're alien to me, you're foreign to me. Why should I try to go out of my way to help you? And some of us, maybe we have a problem with white people or black people, you know, if you're white. Why should I go to my way to try to help this person? The person is not even of my own ethnic stock. Well, the parable is challenging us. Reach out. Anyone who is in need and comes across your path or you come across that person's path and you know the person is in need, that person is your neighbor. Provide the help you can. You know, God. piggybacking on something Don had said, um, I believe that we as Christians, as believers, that's one, I call it an issue. I want to call it a problem, but you can call it a problem as well. Mm -hmm. We have is we tend to look at people. We don't tend to look at people as people first. Mm -hmm. We tend to look at, you know, what, what do they stand for? Whatever, whatever, you know, whatever that means, you know, their beliefs or political affiliation mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, whatever sin has they committed, mm -hmm. um, you know, I like Brother Don was talking about, are they Muslim? Are they Hindu? Are they Buddhist? You know, um, and that's, that's where we put them. Yeah. Rather than saying, all right, this, this, this guy is a person. And um, as Paul would say, a person for whom Christ died. Exactly. And, and, and Paul and, lifts up the value of people generally like that. And you they mustn't that, do anything right. to offend the church of God. Or to offend a person for whom Christ died. Yeah, and we don't we don't automatically write them off. That's right. You know, because they are a Jew or I'm not a Jew, a Muslim, or they're a, a this or you know mm -hmm. they've they've done they're they're a murderer or they're a, 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 you know whatever you know mm -hmm. the list can be you know infinite, endless, right? You know, so you know if we if we look at people as people. Um, just maybe a little different than us. Their environment made them this way or some troubles they went through made them the way they are. Their experiences made them the way they are. They're Muslim because they were born in Egypt and that's all they, they that's the only choice they had. Right, right. You know, and, you know, maybe they were able to experience uh, Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And, you know, we if we're hounding down on them as, as evil people, you know. I mean, if you think about it, look, look I mean, how did how did these people view Christians during the Crusades and those mm -hmm. kind of things, you know? So, you know, if we just if we just go through and 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 just go back to the, the basic of treating people as people right, first, right. versus you know, oh, this guy is a this or that girl is a that or this and person when, is a when that. When we start labeling people, I usually say we are libeling them. Yeah, they can, probably can take out a lawsuit against what against us if they are fussy yeah because you, then you would have to put up or shut up prove that the label that you give to me is defensible what is the evidence for the label that you're giving to me and so it's a, it's a challenge to be more caring to mere loving you know you know it's funny i wanted to tell me the last time when you were preaching um there was a caucasian gentleman that was sitting in the you have, you have two devices on there's a feedback. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm gonna gonna mute the iPhone there. I don't, I don't know why I should. No, not it's not you, Don. It's okay. Yeah, Chisholm. So Reverend Chisholm, when you were preaching the last time at Sierra Norwood, there was mm -hmm. a Caucasian gentleman that was sitting in front of the church. Right. And uh, listen, listen to where my my mind and my heart went. I said, Lord, I hope you you know send somebody to come in here to come hurt us. I was judging the man. <laughs> <laughs> now, li 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 listen to what I'm saying. Because I say, Holy Ghost, you can't let nobody come here, come hurt the sheep, and you don't give me heads up. And then by the end of the service, the Spirit of the Lord reversed it through the, the, the speaker. That's part of the reason why I had to make the, declare, the declaration that I made at the end of it when you asked for comments. Mm -hmm. My comment was that the Lord was truly okay. here. But the reason why I said it, because the Lord was dealing mm -hmm. with me. Because when you said, go to somebody and 
we were playing the song, I need you, you need me. I started to weep when I look at the man because I judged him wrong. Okay. And the Lord convicted my heart. So mm -hmm. when I hear the Samaritan story, you know, the narrative of the bad man being the hero, so to speak. Yeah. Um, you know, it, 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 it reminds me not to be that person. And yeah. my phone broke up when you were speaking because I think you said, we may have a problem with white people and stuff like that, you know? And, and coming from Jamaica, let me just share this quickly and then I'll move out of the way. I never know nothing about no racial barriers and prejudice. Mm -hmm. It's when I come to America, yeah, yeah. I learned this deep richness of racism, what it is, and I faced it uh, head on, you know? And it, it has embedded somewhat in my my spirit, but as we know, the Lord is still cleaning us all up, right? We are delivered, yeah. but it's still a process. Oh, yeah. So, so We're still under this, construction. Absolutely. So what I'm saying, Reverend Chisholm, this, 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 this story has far-reaching implications. Mm -hmm. And even it was for them at that time, which we have been taught, it's still talking to us today. Oh, yes, we are because the Levites, the priests, we turn a blinded eye to many things that we the church and I, I hope you agree with me when I say this we the church me you not the building the church there's a lot of things we need to start engaging in the world mm -hmm. and I think Jesus was challenging Israel at the time I believe the spirit of the Lord is challenging us tonight there's yeah. some things we have to engage man and if we really look into our hearts the mirror is showing us something as I see something in it this, this evening there was an what a very famous you he just happened to have been a baptist preacher in america i've forgotten his name now but he was a fiery solid preacher and he was he was presenting at a conference i i heard it at jts our president dr garrick brought it to chapel and played it for us and he says you know a classic quotation god has called us to be fishers of men and not mere keepers of the aquarium <laughs> classic classic um, yeah yeah he, he was I like that oh yeah. no man the guy when you hear him preach when you hear him talking you know, it's just quotable quotes you just write down quote after quote i've forgotten his name now it has jumped out of my head but he, he died he was declared the best preacher in america on time magazine some years ago okay yeah. you know it, it, uh, i remember that sunday too um with the the gentleman that came and um was it Miss Missy Lane? Missy Lane went in and was spoke spoke to him and um, you know, went in, shook his hand and everything. The guy is a, a believer. He came in from out of town for a little while and he just wanted to go to church on Sunday mm -hmm. and was able to I think he walked to the church and just came in and sat down. Okay. And and cool. and, and and you know, that was it. I remember I was at a service. Don Don said that reminded me. Um I was at a service. It wasn't at our church. And um this and you can only describe him as a Rasta man mm -hmm. came into um, the sanctuary and I mean long hair down to the bottom of his back um, white I want to call it like not really linen but linen linen like mm -hmm. um, pants and and long shirt like you know some of the like the Hindus would wear and I mean clean no shoes and Man, he walked in like right before praise and worship. I'm looking around and he sat like across the aisle from where I was. The amount of people that were watching this man, mm -hmm. not, they were no longer engaged in worship. What's happening in worship? You know, uh, praise and worship is going on. This guy had no care in the world. He had his head up to the sky and dancing with his bare feet. And, um, we, we, we at that time we were still doing the welcome thing so I, you know they had a time of welcome when man the guy smelled like sweet soap mm. so you know you know like i said with the prejudice you see somebody like that yeah. you would think man this guy don't wash his Unkempt, hair he unwashed, doesn't yeah. this and that but he just came he wanted to go to church i guess he didn't believe in wearing shoes or whatever it was and he came in barefoot yeah and came type. worship it was neatly put together like i said clean but like i said you walk around you look around and there's several people stop distracted they yeah. could not worship anymore or they didn't they chose not to worship 
mm-hmm. anymore because they were they were concentrating on what yeah. this guy mm-hmm. um, was doing or how he looked. I think um, Reverend Ledger had something to say. I had to mute the phone because it was echoing. Go ahead. My general. Keeping well, my friend. Keeping well, my friend. Some other discussions we had before. I, 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 I feel I, or assume that this guy must have been Jewish, but that his Jewish friend, who would have been able to identify recognize him, mm-hmm. did nothing to help him. There you go. There you go. But that it was somebody who was the opposite of him. Mm-hmm. That came mm-hmm. to help him. Reach out, uh, yeah. And, and, yeah. And I think that it, it has to do with the, where the heart is. Uh, and, and um, you know, they didn't do anything when they should. But this guy, just because he considered people important uh, and uh, like people, felt that he had to do something mm-hmm. with it for this guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sometimes. We we um come to certain conclusions that the way people because uh, you know we don't we don't fancy them or we don't think that they are important you know? and when we leave them out there we are like they, 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 they pass by and left that man to suffer and die right and you know there's another dimension another that, that I probably that should that just I add that because we are so accustomed to this story. We miss the shocker of how Jesus developed the, the account. Okay, here's a man, badly beaten, wounded, left half dead. Here comes by a religious person, a priest, then a Levite. And then you would expect Jesus to say, all right, the, the big wig hierarchy of the religious establishment did not help. Use a lady was the hero for crying out loud, Lord. You pick a, a neglected arm. Um, Samaritan as the hero of the parable? Why not one of our own kind? Kind of a thing. So, And then that's like something you always say too, where if you don't know the background, you wouldn't, you wouldn't understand the story. Mm-hmm. You know? So, you know, uh, if you didn't know that the Samaritan and Jews didn't take tea, you know? Right, uh, right. You know, you're thinking, oh, what, what's the big deal? And, and right. I was... And I always liked how you clarified we shouldn't call him the good Samaritan because that would that would mean all the others are bad. That's right. You, <laughs> you inviting know? Jewish prejudice against right, them. and and that's exactly you know I never saw it like that yeah. uh, before before we started you know uh, doing these studies. But it, it's the truth. It's yeah. the truth. Oh, he's a oh he's a good one. You yeah, know? he's a good one. An <laughs> exception. Know? Yeah. And and you know, I'm sure we've done that to. Other people, other races, other races, oh, yes. oh, yes. and things. Yeah. Yeah. Rev, go ahead. Yeah. Rev, go ahead. Yeah, but 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 I'm thinking that uh, I mean, uh, Jesus wanted to point out that that's my belief too. Uh, you know the the short the shortcomings of of so many of us. Mm-hmm. You know we behave or act towards other people. True. Uh, True. And it it it's, it doesn't have to be. Uh, a, so from another tribe or another nation, but just how we are, you know, as people, we, we don't really care about people enough to do anything. Because as you said, um, that man could have been a, a, a Jew and, and his friends, his Jewish brothers didn't do anything to help him at all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There are lots of implications lots of for us, you know, modern. Christian modern, profession and practice. Christian profession and practice. Are we naturally in heart people caring? Or does God, the Holy Spirit, have to twist our arm to make us aware? Look, this is a somebody like you. In a different circumstance in life, but a person like you. Reach out a hand and help. And we read, we read stories, you know. I, I was just reading one today. Somebody sent me by WhatsApp of a, a man who was like, the guard of a major company, 300 people work in the company. And he's usually the last person there because he has to lock up as security persons normally do. And the boss was telling him goodbye. He says, oh, look, I'm the last one out now so you can lock up. And he says, no. He said, what, what are you talking about? He said, I have not seen this call, call him Haman. 
I haven't seen Haman. He said, what strange with people here? How do you know that he has not gone and you did not see him? He said, well, let me tell you something, boss. Haman, from I start, from he started working here, he is the only person of the 300 that you have as employees who treats me like a somebody. I'm just the guard and they just pass me by. Nobody says good morning, hello. Haman, every single morning, he greets me well. How are you doing? How are the children kind of a thing? And how are you feeling right now? When, and he greets him when he's going back out. He says he has not greet, he greeted me this morning and he has not said goodbye. So I know he's in the compound somewhere. So they went back in and they searched everywhere where they thought he might be in his office area, adjoining office. No, nothing of him. And then one of them they said, well, well, the only other place he could possibly be maybe collapsed in the, in the cold room. When they opened the big um, cold room, uh, kind of a maximum size um, refrigeration area, they saw him on the floor, shivering like crazy. Somehow the, the door locked on him and he was in there hoping that somebody would recognize as he's in there. He would have died, wow. but for this guy's regard. So the man could not have left and, and not say goodbye. So he must be somewhere in the compound. And people have died. We have read, st I've read stories of a, a man who dies at his seat in his office complex, where other people are in the office complex. His head was on his desk. They thought maybe he was just sleeping. Nobody cared enough to go and say, wake him up when it's time for them to leave the office. When somebody eventually said, you know, let's check. They checked the man was dead. Dead in his seat at his office chair, on his office chair. Nobody cared enough to have checked in on to see what was happening. Why was his head down for so long? And that's how we show callousness. The apathy of the religious people, you know, that's, we reflect that sometimes. Not deliberately, but we do reflect that because we don't do things that show we care for people, as people. And another thing we have to watch, too, you know, is evangelism. Are we simply telling them about Jesus because we want them to join our church? Or are we caring, are we for, their caring for their souls, souls as, people? as people? Something for us, Something to, think for us to think about. Pastor, you're Pastor, going to say something. Let's go on. Yeah, that's the problem. If I don't say it, when I think about it, I forget. Mm. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> But but I, I think that story is telling us that, you know, discrimination is something that we should not practice at all. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, you know, but that um, our concern for other people should come first mm -hmm. and, and uh, not just to think about ourselves. Because some people, one of the guys, you know, didn't do anything because he felt that that might have been a trap and he didn't want to be caught in it. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know what I mean? And sometimes we say, well, I, I, I didn't want to do anything because I, I don't know what he was up to or whatever, whatever. Yeah. When the person yeah. probably was certainly in dire need and, and, and just needed somebody to reach out and help them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I see the, the thing on the television where this woman was being beaten by this guy in, a, in the subway or whatever. And, and this guy came out or came in and, and saw it and rushed towards it. And the guy turned around on him and him run. <laughs> I, I guess he, he wanted to save his skin That's right. more than That's to right. think about trying to, sell, to save that lady. In, in, you know, and she suffered so much. Yeah. You know. But, um, oh boy. Our determination, our determination is to lift our, to view, lift of our view of people. Every person that we encounter is a person for whom Christ died. And therefore, we have to see them through right. that, that spectacle. This is a person for whom Christ died. What can I do to help the person? It does not have to be a spiritual act or a spiritual service, but just a normal need that the person may have. We meet that need because the person is someone for whom Christ died. It makes a world that it could revolutionize how we approach life in general. There's a hand up. Yes, uh, Reverend Chisholm, do you, do you think that there is any significance, um, just, just your thoughts on it, with Jesus attaching the part of where the Samaritan not only goes and pays his upfront medical bills, 
but the fact that he's actually showing currency, you know, even though we understand we have to use the currency of love and stuff like that. Do you think there's any significance or anything you'd like to highlight from the fact that Jesus also adds that part to the story? So it's not only about taking him up on the mule, but delivering him to the inn and actually uh, paying spending, for paying for it, yeah. Do, and do you think there's any if if he Go ahead, sir. if looking after him is gonna cost more, put it on my charge. Yes. I'll take care of that when next I'm back in the area. It's going beyond the call of duty. And especially don't, don't so, talk. Go yeah, ahead, sir. Yeah, especially so if this the, the person who the Samaritan helped was a Jew. Here am I despised by this group of people. But I'm using my own resources to take care of him because he was in need. And promising my resources in addition for his keep if it costs more than what I'm paying now to the innkeeper. It's a simple well, I, act of mercy well, and love. Yes, it, 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 yes it, it, it almost points to what Christ has done for us. The deposit right. here yeah. and then the coming back, doesn't it? That's right. <laughs> if a, I think he must point it to himself. Very likely, yeah. Yeah. This man behaves as I have behaved for the human, for the whole world. Be a, a challenge, be a neighbor. The lawyer, Amen. the lawyer must have been stumped after that. And you know, why didn't I keep my mouth shut? Yeah, <laughs> Look, I got, got myself into. Yeah. Brother Earl, I think you 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 had come off to say something. Yes, I, I want to make a two point. You know. I understand, you know, where Jesus is coming from and what he's trying to, you know, that we need to sacrificially give and help others. But um, we need also to, um, you know, show, um, <clears throat> take precaution in certain instances. Mm -hmm. We can't sometimes go blindly. You know, our heart is telling us to help in a situation. So, you know, I would say that we need to use wisdom you know, especially in nowadays when you pass on the road, is, you know, just like what Pastor Lynch just said, it might have, it could be a setup, and we know people do that today. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> but we need to extend and show empathy for others, and 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 sacrificial care and sacrificial giving. Yeah. And Next point I want to ask before you go tonight is the. When it comes to the Samaritans, you know, in the background you study, you're saying that they were a mixed breed. Yeah, they were, and mixed breed. They were not considered Jews. Not pure but, Jews. They're they're Jews, and the Jews recognize them as brethren, but because they got mixed up in blood, they're not. Pure oh, say to the more spiritual base. Um, although, although I think they. They said that there was interbreeding with other nationalities. Yes, yes. But, so, in other words, the blood is not clean. So, we can't accept you fully as part of us. I thought it was because of the, the, the mixed religion rather than the, the, the that, actual physiology. All, all of that would be mixed up in it. It's got a mix up and blender thing because Jews <laughs> are not supposed to mix up and mingle with any and everybody. If people unless, they're, God, unless they're grafted into their religion. Yeah. I they think that's why they would be observing Jewish um, scruples religiously. And you're saying, um, I remember when I read Nehemiah, um, during that period, they were telling, I believe, what was the guy again? Uh, <laughs> uh, I think Nehemiah was telling them to go and take back their uh, their non Jewish wives back oh, to yeah, their they, country. Uh, yeah, in the mix up and blender. They, they yeah, he said, God commanded them to. Jewish wives for yeah, to return people. those wives. Yeah, the new that was a tough one. Up to now, oh, I still don't fully understand that one. <laughs> it's, it's a rough ball game. Yeah, and take by the children too. You start them go with them children and everything. What do you do with them? Abandon them now, kind of a thing. It's rough. Yeah, that was rough. Yeah, man, not easy. That was rough. All right. <laughs> but sometimes we have to, in a in a in a day and age such as we are in now, you have to be careful. It's a judgment call. Therefore, yeah. we have our hearts have to be leaning towards helping people and let the spirit overrule and say, no, this one is not uh, not worthy of your help. Yeah. We operate the other way. We don't want to help anybody and the Holy Spirit have to twist our arm behind us and say, look, mm -hmm. you're careful, yes, but this person has a genuine need. 
agree. Thank yeah, you. I mean, like I said, we have to apply empathy, but we have to we have to extend grace too and have compassion mm -hmm. because you know today for you, tomorrow for me. That's right. You know, I agree you exactly with what you said there, brother Clint. That you know, we we just have to help, and uh, you know, we like to ask all kind of questions, like we are some of the government agency that right. has to have all the information before right. they can put you on, you know, give you anything or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that if, if we truly love other people, we, we will go out of our way and do it. And sometimes we say to ourselves, why did I do that? Mm -hmm. But the fact is that because God speaks to us in different ways and, and when we are in tune with him, he will move us to do what is right. Uh, you know, from day to day, Indeed. even when, even if we don't understand why, if even if we don't understand why, yeah, as he prompts us, let us be willing to hear his heed his prompting and do the good that we know he's telling us to do. So let's not be. And, and one other one other thing that I note from the story is that this man this man didn't know that he would go, would, would go down in in history. Uh, are we talking about him at Not this time? He didn't plan that. Years later, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. The man has been immortalized in literature, in yeah. art, and in law. Because the, Amer the Samaritan law in America. That's right. A testimony to the man's current existence in our, in our current reality, even though the deed he did was like 2,000 years plus ago. Th that's yeah. right. Yeah. Let's continue to do good as the Lord prompts us. And through the goodness yes. that we do, people and, and, might and see don't, and don't, and don't count the cost. That's right. Don't count the cost. Because sometimes that is the thing that holds us back from doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. we, we, we're thinking about what does that mean for me? Or yeah, what do I get out of know, it? Some other thing that we shouldn't even have be thinking about. Mm -hmm. But because the Lord moves us in our hearts to do it, that we should just simply do it because... He tells us by his spirit. We don't, sometimes we do things that, you know, we don't understand. Why did I do that? Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? But it, it is because of our relationship with the, with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's putting things in our spirits to do what right. is right. Uh, and, and, the, and if we're listening to him, we will do it. Well, let me just um, indicate next week, God willing, we may have some of the brethren from Dundee United Methodist joining us and the text I'm looking at John 21 15 to 17 the topic will be the challenge of love Jesus versus Peter very fascinating passage as Jesus challenges Peter asking him a troublesome question and Peter get begs after a while <laughs> which he is want to do I mean when Jesus asks him something more than once you kind of feel Jesus you kind of get into a business too much, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Back off, kind of. Man, my answer already. It's a fascinating passage. You say John 21, 15 yeah. through? 17. That's what I thought, okay. The challenge of love. Jesus uses a, a Greek word for love, and Peter switch on him, use a different one. Jesus asked him the second time, and, and, and Jesus used the same word for love. And Peter said, Lord, you, you know me and your brethren, we love you but not the word that Jesus is using. And then interest me, even though I'm probably half stealing my thunder, Jesus switched to Peter's word. Mm -hmm. And asked him, do you really have me as your bridge with your friend? He said, Lord, you know all things. By that time, Peter blew mad, you know. Because <laughs> <laughs> he knows that Jesus has rubbed him the wrong way. But it's a fascinating passage. I'll also mention the plurality of words for love in Greek. In, in English, we just have one word, love. I love fish, I love oxtail and beans. <laughs> I love my wife, I love my daughter, I love my son. One word, all those kinds of love, do all of them make sense, really, kind of thing. But the limitations of English, we won't bother with, but you might get some ideas through the various words for love in Greek. So that's the next week, Sonny. And well, my wife was just saying... My wife was just saying, you know, me love ice cream. <laughs> love ice, that's right, you love ice cream. You know? and in, in my case, rum and raisin. That's right, rum raisin. Uh, that's it. Uh, 
a member of the church took us, my wife and the children were in Canada where they were, and they took us out for ice cream. And she, she was placing the order and asked, asked my wife first what flavor she want, daughter, son, and then she asked me last, and so I said, um, I, I like rum and raisins. She said, one rum and raisin for pasta, and go easy on the raisins. <laughs> <laughs> I said, girl, you're bad, you know. <laughs> Some people can't call it, you know. They, they like Roman raisins, but you know, uh, may I have a scoop of the one with the raisins in it? <laughs> now I'm into the word rum. <laughs> so, we are like that. You know. That's a good one. Yeah, man. All right. Yeah. So God willing, next week we'll pick up. And then remember, um, I said it last week, and I said it, and I said it Sunday as well. Um, we have Reverend Chisholm here, and you know he's willing to present with us and you know uh, share his knowledge and understanding with us. If there's something that you know you're 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 finding difficult to understand, or um, something you would like clarified, um, let us know, or you can let him know. You can write it down from now and bring it Sunday, God willing. Maybe slip him a piece of paper. <laughs> And uh, give him um, some time, and um, you may hear hear about it. Um, and for Brother continue. Brown, Damian, mm -hmm. I got in touch with my classmate, Peter Espute, mm -hmm. and he sent a response. So I'm going to type it up, and uh, I'll send it to I'll send it to Natalie tomorrow, God willing, and she can make it available to all of you. It will make sense to some of the brethren who are not regular at the Bible study, but Brother Brown and others of you who heard his query. Mm. Yeah, about the um the his was the transubstantiation thing. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, the body and the blood of Jesus. Right, yeah. right. Peter Peter was quite helpful with that. Okay. And uh, yeah. please uh, encourage the brethren to support me with my new book, Rastafari Beliefs, a, a, a critical analysis. The only book that challenges and demolishes the fundamental claims of Rastafari. And it's half price now as pre-order on Amazon. The, 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 the pre-order is open to the end of October. And the, the, the book will be, will be available in your Kindle by November 30 or slightly earlier, the publishers tell me. So $7, $7 something, call it $8 for the pre-order price. It will be $15 when when November hits, when the print orders can be received. So okay. capitalize on the pre-order now and get buy the book at half price. And you're supporting my ministry and my life if you do that. Okay. Rev, you yes, mind closing us out a word of prayer? Me? Yes, sir. All right, let's pray. Our Father, we give you thanks in the name of Jesus for your presence with us tonight, for the lessons you have taught us and for what you will continue to impress upon our minds and our hearts concerning the Samaritan parable. We pray that we might be obedient to your voice and trust you for the grace that we need to change how we live and move and our beings with people as you prompt us to be more caring as that Samaritan was to that man who was badly wounded. Bless us and strengthen us, Lord, we pray. Grant our bodies and minds good sleep and refresh us to serve you in whatever way you call us to do that tomorrow as it pleases you. For Christ's sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Good All right, night. everyone. Good night. Good Remember, night. Pastor's night. Appreciation on Sunday, God willing, come on out to show um, Reverend Legister your love. And to see also to see Reverend Chisholm as well, because we appreciate him as well. Amen. Yeah. All right. All right, Take everyone. Care. Have a good Bye. weekend. Right. See you. Yeah. Right.